Hey cats, Ed Turbo Bud here. A longer run update on a shoe that didn't really knock me out when I reviewed it initially. But you know me, I persist, I hang in there. Has the shoe improved over a few miles? Let's find out. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications. It really helps us out here at Ed Bud Running Shoe Reviews. Also, give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. If there's a particular question you want to ask me about this shoe or anything else about running, hit us up with a super thanks down below. It really does help out. A 10 mile effort today of 16.2 kilometers. So that takes me to 40 miles for the week, remain consistent over the last six or seven weeks now. So 65.5 kilometers total. One hour, 19 seconds, and an average pace of about four minutes 52 per kilometer. Three miles, easy warm up, and then I decide to mix it up completely. A whole bunch of reps at one minute, a 10K pace or effort, and a mile of recovery. I did two sets of eight with a quite serious hill climb in the middle. Not entirely sure why I decided to run up that hill. I just felt like it I suppose. That's strange, I can remember another runner saying they just felt like it. 250 foot of ascent there. Oh, on a warm day, temperatures as per where they've been over the UK summer so far. Average heart rate of 132 beats per minute, but a higher max of 149 as we get further into those reps later in the run. If you're yet to watch my initial review of this shoe, I suggest you go and do that first. It's probably the lowest scored shoe ever really. Just felt it was very expensive for what it is, kind of like a daily shoe really. And the two shoes within my pair were quite unbalanced in terms of what I had underfoot. Overall, bit of a disappointment. Has the shoe improved over time? Otherwise, I've still got my reservations about the flyknit material here. The fit itself is dictated completely by that flyknit material. It's still quite a hard shoe to get on. A couple of people said, well, yeah, why don't you use a shoehorn? Well, why should I need to do that in this day and age? There's lots of things that people add to running shoes these days to help them get the shoes on. I think a shoehorn is not really something that I want to carry around with me all the time. If that's what you want to do, then absolutely fine. I think part of the problem is where the tongue's kind of stitched into the sides of the shoe. It doesn't really allow for that much flexibility or configurability in terms of the upper material and the lockdown. Some of that material has begun to flex a little bit. And I have found myself moving towards the front of the shoe. I just can't really get the laces tight enough or the lockdown's just not consistent enough over the top of the foot. I've been using this shoe as like a casual everyday kind of shoe to commute to work. So I've been getting lots of walking miles into it. And it does seem to have improved things a little bit in terms of the midsole, but not really the upper. I have found that I do need a thicker sock now with the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature from when I initially used it out of the box. I think that is due to that upper shift. I've got to be honest, around about eight miles in today's longer run, I could feel the two smaller toes on the lateral side of my right foot slamming into the front of the upper, into the toe box. And it really wasn't a particularly nice feeling. And there's not an awful lot I can do about that to try and improve the lockdown here. There's no real stability or consistency to the lockdown, which is going to be an aspect of this shoe that limits its distance capabilities for me. Thinking about the midsole now. So I think some impactful walking over the last week or so has kind of crushed down the ZMAX a little bit. I think it's compressed everything together and things have balanced out a little bit. It is a little better in the right foot. It does still feel as if I'm sliding down towards the ball of my foot in the shoe. That's just from a standing position as well is how it feels. It's nothing to do with sort of running. It does feel like that while running, but you can just stand up in the shoe and it feels unbalanced. I gotta be honest, over a range of paces, the shoe does feel a lot better now. I mean, it's not super sprightly or anything like that, but it's certainly serviceable over a range of paces if that's what you wanna do in your longer run. I have to say though, after about seven or eight miles, I was wishing for a little bit more under the forefoot, which is an issue I did have with the original Pegasus Turbo. Just wished I had a little bit more depth and compression to the foam. Does feel a little bit slappy underfoot as well. I think it's something to do with the actual width that we've got here in the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature. I think the foam height here seems to be dialed in for somewhere between about 10k to seven miles. Beyond that, it did start to falter a little bit. So certainly not one for the longer efforts, for me anyway, by any stretch. And I think it pigeonholes this shoe into a sort of daily clog category rather than a more versatile number that you could use over a much longer distance. I think putting it into that 145 pound bracket as well is 
asking a lot certainly when you consider you can pay a little bit more and get something like the endorphin speed two or three or even less and get something that's a better shoe in the adios six or seven as i say the more limited distance capabilities of this shoe is something that it has in common with its predecessor though that wasn't really a welcome trait in any of these models it is a bit odd that under the forefoot it just seems a little bit lacking certainly with the amount of foam that we do have here there's a little bit more than we had in the peg 35 turbo or the Pegasus Turbo 2. I think people will probably look towards some of the more generous midsole models for their longer runs. Also wise, the shoe performed pretty well. Still probably my favorite aspect of it on a variety of different surfaces. The grip was good, although of course everything's just bone dry here right now. I did find on some smooth surfaces that the very flat rubber here doesn't really have all that much grip but on pretty much everything else it's quite serviceable though in fairness no shoes in recent memory really work all that well on very smooth surfaces so it's a good 36 miles into these so far running and walking i think the flexing of the midsole material has actually improved the shoe so you're gonna have to get a load of extra walking miles into this one if you really want to utilize it for running there's a slightly less brittle feeling to it all now i think that's where the zoom x scraps have kind of compressed down and perhaps sort of balanced out a little bit so certainly a dollop more usable than after my initial miles. So I heartily recommend getting this one on foot and using it for some casual miles first. I mean, if you're just looking for a shoe to do a bit of running, bit of walking, this could work okay, I suppose. But there's other shoes that cost way less than this one that will do exactly that. I've seen quite a few people make that declaration as well about this shoe. I kind of just wish they'd made it completely out of SRO2 material. That seems a lot more fun and exciting it's just not really a pegasus turbo i think they should have just called it the pegasus next nature that would have made a lot more sense just don't think it deserves the turbo moniker what are your views on the pegasus turbo next nature from nike let us know down in the comments musical interlude time i think if you dig back into the discography of chuck berry you find some really interesting stuff everybody knows all the famous rock and roll tunes and everything but he did some really brilliant story related tracks i'm going to tell you about a couple of them downbound train and havana moon are absolutely fantastic one's all about this uh, guy he wakes up and he's kind of on this train headed for hell and he's talking about all the people that you can see on the train how he's feeling like it's really hot it's like he's out of control going in a direction that he can't sort of escape and havana moon's a great track all about this chap who's sat on a beach waiting for this boat to turn up wondering whether it's going to be there wondering whether it will eventually arrive and sadly he falls asleep and misses it and he just sees it sailing off into the sunset brilliant songs the instrumentation's totally different to what you'd expect on a standard chuck berry tune does go to show another layer of songwriting capability and skill that the guy had at the time go and check out some of the older material from chuck berry you won't be disappointed thanks for tuning in people it's always appreciated hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when i launch the new videos for you also hit that like button and share this video with your running buddies my name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.